Father and son reported missing return home. The father and son who were reported missing on the weekend have returned home. Roderick O'Connor, 38, and his young son, Roderick Jr., whose relatives had been unable to reach them since Good Friday, returned home yesterday afternoon. The father and son returned home after spending some time in Westmoreland. In accordance with the procedure for people reported missing and have returned, O'Connor reported to the Olympic Gardens police station where he was interviewed. Brooklyn White, a niece of O'Connor Sr. who spoke to Loop News, is relieved that her uncle is home. I'm 100% happy, she said. Men held alongside 14 YO in Lotto Scam Raid, identified. The men held during the raid carried out by officers from the Lotto Scam Task Force on Tuesday have been identified. They are 21-year-old Josea Leslie and 19-year-old Amarian Hall all of West Village, Montego Bay, St. James, Davisito Cumberland. A 14-year-old boy, whose name was withheld as he is underage, was also taken into custody. Reports are that lawmen conducted two raids at a house located in the West Village area of the parish when four persons were found with lead sheets. They were subsequently arrested and charged. They have since been charged with possession of identity information following an operation carried out by the Lottery Scam Force on Tuesday, April 18. They are to appear before the point to land disputes as driver of some murders in St. Anne. Despite a national decline in murders, the Garden Parish of St. Anne has recorded a worrying increase in homicides so far this year, with a significant number of the incidents believed to have stemmed from land disputes. Still, major crimes in the parish are down by 31% when compared to last year figures. An update on the crime scene in the parish was provided at last Thursday's monthly meeting of the St. Anne Municipal Corporation by Deputy Superintendent Linton Bailey, the officer in charge of the crime portfolio in the parish. He said up to April 12 this year, some 22 murders were reported in St. N, in comparison to 14 over the same period last year. However, he said, we have made significant progress in our arrest rates in these murders. We have so far made 11 arrests in these murders. Bailey posited that a significant number of the homicides stemmed from disputes over land possession, this while the usual hotspot areas have not been posing major challenges relative to murders so far this year. Pertaining to the murders, these murders are committed right across the parish. The hotspot areas which would have the most potential for violence, those are not the areas this time giving us the issues, the senior lawman revealed. He indicated that the usual hotspot areas are well policed. Continuing, he said, some of these murders, a lot of them are from land disputes, and these land disputes are not necessarily over paperworks but are over possessions. So, we intend to analyze and have the proper intervention in these matters, Bailey indicated. Meanwhile, he outlined that break-ins are down by 23% in the parish, while robberies have decreased by 19%. Businessman hit with $6.4 million penalty for illegal bleaching cream profits. The Financial Investigations Division, FID, has secured a pecuniary penalty order, PPO, of 6.4 million Jamaican dollars in the Supreme Court against St. Andrew businessman and entrepreneur Chi Chung, who authorities said was charged with unlawful possession of a quantity of products, bleaching cream, stored for sale contrary to Section 26, 1, H, of the Pharmacy Act. The FID, in a release, said, it later presented evidence proving that Chung's lifestyle was, in part, financed by the unlawful sale of the products. The PPO was granted by Justice G. Fraser pursuant to Section 5, 3, B, of the Proceeds of Crime Act, 
Poka. Chung was represented by King's Counsel Peter Champagny. Principal Director of Investigations at the FID Keith Darian noted, the genesis and passage of this case through the court should be a reminder to the public and business operators of the strength of POCA. If you benefit from breaking the law, the FID will utilize POCA to remove that benefit. Our law enforcement colleagues are becoming increasingly vigilant in looking beyond predicate offenses to identify where a benefit has been derived from the criminal activities for which persons have been charged or convicted, the FID official said. Continued collaboration across law enforcement and anti-corruption agencies will result in more cases such as these being prosecuted in the courts. We urge business owners, employees, and the public to increase their awareness of POCA while generally ensuring adherence to the laws which govern our conduct as citizens, the FID said. Following an intelligence-led operation on April 11, 2017, conducted at a commercial premises at a section of Constant Spring Road in St. Andrew, Chi, was charged with unlawful possession of a quantity of products, bleaching cream, stored for sale contrary to Section 26, 1, H, of the Pharmacy Act. The products contain substances that are classified as List 2, 2, and List 4, 4, drugs or prescription drugs and would require a medical doctor authorization before use. She was also charged with breaches of Section 210 of the Customs Act and breaches of Section 4, 1, of the Food and Drugs Act. On October 5, 2018, Chung was convicted in the corporate area parish court for breaches of the Pharmacy Act. A verdict of not guilty was returned on the charges related to breaches of the Customs Act and the Food and Drugs Act. The FID successfully made an application on October 5, 2018, to the Supreme Court for Chi to be committed for consideration of a forfeiture or pecuniary penalty order pursuant to Section 5 of the Proceeds of Crime Act. The FID presented evidence proving that Chung's lifestyle was, in part, financed by the unlawful sale of the products. He did not contest the charges and was cooperative throughout the trial. This, along with other technicalities throughout the life of the trial resulted in a PPO being granted in the amount of 6.4 million Jamaican dollars on March 23, 2023, in the Supreme Court. Tourism will be Jamaica's biggest driver of economic growth, Bartlett. Tourism will be the biggest driver of economic growth and prosperity in Jamaica for years to come, according to Portfolio Minister Edmund Bartlett. Bartlett made the declaration on Tuesday as he opened the 2023-24 sectoral debate at Gordon House. To support his point, Bartlett pointed to the robust growth in the sector over the past three years, with projections for significant growth in the short and long term. He highlighted that the tourism sector contributed significantly to the growth in the overall economy and other industries, such as the agriculture, forestry and fishing industry, which was estimated to have grown by 9%. This improvement reflected the impact of increased demand, particularly from the tourism sector, which grew consequently on the relaxation of previously implemented COVID-19 measures, Bartlett said. He also pointed out that in 2022, Jamaica welcomed 3.3 million visitors, a 117% increase over 2021, with estimated foreign exchange earnings of roughly 3.7 billion US dollars. The tourism minister noted that 2022 earnings represented a 71.4% increase when compared to 2021, when earnings totaled 2 billion US dollars. Bartlett also pointed out that monthly stopover arrivals began to surpass 2019 figures as of June 2022 and said it is expected that 2023 will show a full recovery in annual figures ahead of previous estimates that full recovery would occur in 2024, with projections of 3.8 million visitors and foreign exchange earnings of 4.1 billion US dollars. He also shared that for the January to March 2023 period, it is estimated that Jamaica welcomed 1.185 million visitors, which represents growth of 94.4% when compared to the same period in 2022. Bartlett said investments continue to boom and drive tourism recovery. Over the last four years, tourism investments have contributed to 20% of the island's total foreign direct investments. For the next five to ten years, there are multiple upcoming investment projects, which will see an additional 15,000 to 20,000 new rooms with investments valuing 4 billion US dollars to 5 billion US dollars, he said. For calendar year 2022, 
government revenue, from the tourism sector, through TEF charges, airport charges and taxes, was approximately 40.6 billion Jamaican dollars. It is absolutely important that you are made aware of the work that we have been doing over the last year in repositioning the sector to achieve higher growth rates, a better spread of the benefits of tourism to each and every Jamaican, and stronger linkages throughout the economic fabric of this beautiful island, said Bartlett.